There we go. Cool. So, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Lord Welshy, and welcome to my first painting live stream. Um, what I'm doing today is I'm going to be painting um, Prudence, which is Jane's character from uh, the Oxventure, which is outside Xbox's uh, Dungeons and Dragons um, kind of adventures that they've done on their channel. Um, I really like the characters that they all came up with, so what I've done is I've gone on to Hero Forge and created um, or designed the uh, kind of a version of their characters and had them 3D printed. Um, I've got Prudence, so she's going to be the first one I paint, and that's Jane's character. Uh, as you can see on screen, what I'm using is um, the official character art, which is done by the Dusty Leaves, uh, who's on Twitter. Um, the, with the handle is up under the character. Um, so I'm using that as my kind of guide for the uh, colour scheme for the painting. Um, so that's what I'm going to try and go for, so we'll see how close uh, I can actually get to that today. So I think what we're going to start with is I'm going to paint, uh, kind of block paint, the uh, kind of the main base colours for the skin, uh, the clothing, and then kind of the spell effects. Um, and we'll go from there really. So we'll see how this goes and you'll have to bear with me if I'm just kind of pausing and umming and ahhing a lot because this is the first time I've done a painting live stream so you know it's about as well planned out as you could expect. <laughs> so uh, first thing I'm going to do uh, we will go with the uh, kind of skin I think. So we're going to use Citadel paints um, because I collect quite a bit of Warhammer uh, so those are the ones I've got most access to. Now I have a very bad habit of not thinning down my paints, so I'm going to try and actually do that today using my palette paper. I want to make sure that I don't make the colour too thick. At the same time, I don't want it to be too thin either, but... Right, there we go. That should be good, I think. So we've got a little bit of water mixed in with the paint, so... Let's see how this goes. I'm going to test on her tail because it's quite a nice smooth surface rather than on the finer detail of her face. So I think, yes, that should work quite nicely as a little base coat. I'm going to try and make sure I uh, keep this in view of the camera. So, need a little bit more there. Here we go. I'm going to run out of this paint quite quickly, actually, what I've got on the palette, but uh, I kind of know what I'm going for, at least, so that's a good start. So this is just kind of the base coat to, um, you know, block out kind of the main sections of colour that I want on, uh, on the skin here, which is... Whoop, don't want to spend too much, Prudence. So add a bit more water there. That's a little bit too much, actually. There we go. So add a little bit more paint to that as well. This is the problem, is I don't want it too watered down, because otherwise I have to do a lot of layers. There we go. There we go, that's, that's a bit better. That's a bit more the consistency I wanted on the palette. I don't think you can see it very well. It's kind of in the top left corner. Um, I'll say, th this being the first painting stream I've done, I've kind of... this is kind of a little bit of an experiment in terms of how the camera setups are going to work um, to be able to see the painting and what I'm doing. Get a bit of colour on there, and maybe a little bit too much water uh, in the in the mixture I've got. As I say, I have a bad habit of not watering it down at all, um, which ends up just making it a little bit too kind of blocky um, or a bit too thick on the paint. So you end up losing a little bit of the detail sometimes, which is not a good thing. There we go, that's a little bit better. So, there we go. I think I've got the consistency about right now. 
So I'm not too worried if I kind of go outside of the lines at this point. Um, because I'm going to obviously do the block colours for um, like the cloak and the clothing afterwards. And then I've got a layer that of paint that will go over the top of this as well. So if anything, any of the black underneath kind of shows through, this is just the initial uh, block coat. So let's try and get your face done as well. Try... And avoid doing too much of the uh, the hair there. Here we go. It's looking okay so far, I think. So hopefully, I've chosen a good kind of undercolor uh, for Prudence's skin tone. Red should work quite well, I think. How's that showing up? Not great, because um, I'm just using the web camera and it refuses to autofocus uh, onto Prudence itself. But there we go. Here we go. Yeah, that's looking good. So, yeah, because I've watered down the paint this time, it just means I can do additional layers without risking a loss of detail because um, I really want to avoid that don't want to lose any of the detail there we go okay yeah, I think we're getting there now that's good that's good so moving on so really the only other bit of exposed kind of skin we've got uh, is the hands. Now, I have got these spell effects on the hands. So I only really need to do the backs, I guess. Let's see. Now what I'm using here is a... Uh, a paint handle from again this is a citadella games workshop thing uh that i actually got for my birthday from my wife it makes it much much easier to kind of hold the model because i'm not holding um the model by any actual structural parts it's i'm looking at the wrong camera i'm over here um i'm holding by by the handle which means i'm not kind of getting in my own way trying to paint the model itself like my hands my fingers are getting in my way which is nice there we go just want to make sure we get the inside of the hand as well hopefully you can see this okay on the stream uh, that's quite good there's a little bit there we need to do here we go there we are, that's looking good. Okay, and then we've just got a left hand to do, and then that's the uh, kind of initial base flesh colour done. And we can move on to the next part, which I think I'm actually going to do her hair. So what I'm using um, colour-wise is the, um, as I mentioned earlier, the Citadel paints. Now, this base colour for Prudence's skin is Corn Red. Um, just to give kind of a nice deep base colour um, for the next shade to go over. There we go. That's looking... Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, how am I going to... There we go. So... Yeah, you can't really see. Let's try holding it up to this one. Ooh. No, uh, it doesn't want to come out. But hopefully, once I've actually got kind of the uh, uh, better colouring on there, um, after I've kind of laid them up a little bit, you'll be able to see a bit clearer. Okay, so we're done with that for the moment. So we'll give the brush a little rinse off. Ooh. 
Okay. So, on to the next part. So, we're going to do... Uh, I think we will do Prudence's hair. So, uh, Prudence's hair is not quite black, I don't think. It looks like a very dark brown. So, for that, I think we're going to use uh, some Rhinox hide. So give that a bit of a shake. Always shake up your paints. I keep looking at the wrong camera. I'm kind of the <laughs> it's the one in front of me I need to be focusing on. Um, so always shake. Make sure you shake up your paints because they can separate if they're left to sit for too long, um, which obviously you don't want. Uh, which brush shall we use? Not the zero zero. We will go with yes. That one will do. So same again. Get a little bit. On the palette, there we go, that's looking good. And then just a dab of water on there as well, not too much because we don't want it to get thinned down too much, otherwise you won't see the colour at all, especially going over uh, a black base coat. Um, so we want to make sure that we don't lose that colouring. So here we go. Now again, what's quite nice is because Prudence's hair is quite dark. Um, I'm quite happy to leave some of the recesses in the black so that it provides its own kind of natural shading. Um, it's a, probably a bit of a cheating tactic to do, um, but I think it could turn out quite well. Now, this brown is actually working very, very nicely on the... Uh, the old hair colour there. Get a little bit more on the brush. There we go. That's looking rather good. He says, judging his own painting technique. Uh, I'll let you be the judge of how good this is going to be at the end. But hopefully... Smooth strokes. Now this is where it might get a bit tricky because I want to avoid colouring the horns at this point. I can always fix it later if I need to, but it just means there's the risk of a bit of colour showing through when we get to that kind of uh, that colour that we want to put on. Okay, here we go. Get a bit more on that brush. There we are. Now, what I do want to do here, a little bit there, okay, I'm going to need a little bit more of the paint, like so, a little bit more water, there we are, so we get some good coverage. Uh, there's a couple of points here where, oh, there goes my iPad where we did get just a little bit of the um, flesh kind of came onto the hair, just where it kind of meets. There we go, that's looking rather nice. Ah. Just give it a quick once more, a good, good once over to make sure we've got all of the hair done. Yes, there we go. That's looking nice. A little bit more on this side. Okay. So that is the brown. Again, I don't think that's going to show up because brown on black <laughs> is uh, not very conducive to uh, showing up. On camera. Uh, so that's the hair colour kind of blocked in now. Now one thing I've noticed while painting the hair is Prudence's ears do just slightly poke through her hair and I didn't notice that with the black undercoat. So I've got a little bit of, I haven't got a little bit of, I need to redo the red because it's dried. Uh, so what we want is to just do a tiny bit of the red on the ears 
to make sure that they can be seen against the hair now that's too watery possibly get some of the water off the brush there we go so we've got a little bit there just a dab of the red and same on the other side just a dab of the red and there we go so we fixed that tiny little problem okay so next up i think we're probably going to do um prudence's armor now kind of going off that uh, i would say what do we think i think that's probably probably is going to be a silver color silver gray i think um so let's see i'll probably do what i'll do for this is uh the gray i think so we'll go with a layer of dawnstone i think should be good there we go get that might need quite a bit of the dawnstone because I think there's a fair bit to paint here go water down that paint a little bit there we are get a decent layer up on the brush and let's see how's this gonna look Not bad. Okay. So again, I'm just going to block the entire kind of top section in this grey. And then what I'll do is there's a couple of sections that I want to go over, uh, which I'll do in the silver. But the grey is kind of going to be the uh, the base kind of under under armour. And I figure that'll be a good colour to use as a base colour for the silver to go over the top of as well. Here we go. Careful not to hit any of the skin tones that we've already painted here. Now, any bits of black that still show through, I'll be able to fix that as well. Let's just make sure we get all this. There we go. I think we're getting there now, aren't we? Okay. Get a little bit more on the brush. There we go. So, let's make sure we get some on the belt as well. And then, round to the back. I'm trying to be as smooth as I can with this one. Okay. 
So we'll do the arm armor now as well. Arm armor. The arm armor. Uh, not when they're high up on the shoulders, they're not. They're pauldrons at that point, I believe. A bit more onto there. There we go. That's looking good. So. Here we are. Hey, more going off. So, keep it going. That's running out now again. So we need to put a little bit more. Oh, Got to be careful of that. Here we go. So a bit more onto the pallet. Tiny bit more water. Here we go. How's that going to look now? Yes, that's good. I think the uh, grey undercoat here was a good choice for the armour. I'm just going to quickly go over the back a bit because there's a... could make that a bit smoother. Yeah, that was looking a bit better. Okay. Make sure we get the inside of the arm as well. Now, I haven't painted many miniatures of this kind of scale. Um, in fact, I've only done one so far, which was one of my own um, Dungeons & Dragons characters, who is a Dragonborn Paladin. Um, now... Uh, most of my painting experience, or all of it actually, has been Warhammer figures, which are a little bit larger than uh, these Hero Forge minis. So the level of kind of fine detail on these is a bit smaller than what I'm used to. I think it's been good preparation though to uh, try and get these done. Let's add a little bit more water to that palette make sure we've got the grey coming in and just a touch more of the paint itself just so it doesn't end up being too thin there we go okay wow that's really going off I should probably turn that onto silent here we go That's probably a bit too watered down now. Here we go. We'll add a little bit more paint to that. Thicken it up just a touch. Now, I think from what I've seen, that's a little bit better. Um, a lot of people suggest that it should be one part water to one part paint. Now, I sometimes feel like that might go a bit too thin, but... I don't know, I guess it can be down to personal preference. I just quite like... I'm just... Based on how I've painted, because I, I never really had anyone show me how to do this very much. Um, like, I never went into any hobby shops um, and took part in any painting lessons. I kind of just did it myself. Um, more recently, I've kind of started watching a couple of painting tutorials um, on YouTube and Twitter, um, or Twitch even, um, and other people doing their live streams, uh, just to try and pick up a few tips myself and then kind of try and emulate that um, with a little bit of practice on especially Warhammer models. Yeah, there we go. So the grey, I think that's starting to show through fairly nicely there. So we're starting to get a feel for how um, Prudence is going to look when complete. Um, so the top half is kind of the base block colours are getting there. Um, it's really just the lower half we need to focus on now. Um, so what I will do while I've got this grey, I'm going to block 
color her boots into the same gray because um, again looking at the uh, character art we've got here um, it seems to be kind of a metallic finish so I want to get that gray block color in now I am going to need silver at some point and I don't think I grabbed it so I'll, ha I'll do that in a little bit um, I'll get the uh, I'll finish off the block coating. By the way, all the terms that I'm using paint when I'm painting, so like block coating and so on, um, don't think that that's official or common parlance by any means. That's just kind of how I refer to it. I have no kind of true uh, indication or knowledge as to whether more people call it that. Um, I'm just kind of making things up as I go along, really. Just running out of a little bit of that. So we'll get a bit more colour onto the palette. Ah, there we go. So we've got the colours arriving by, uh, by Courier. Excellent. Thank you. My lovely wife has just delivered the uh, the silver colours that I'm going to need a little bit later on, so I don't have to move to get them. I can just uh, I've kind of just got colour service, uh, room service direct to my table. And I'm calling. <laughs> oh, if only I was Pantone. Oh yeah. Rich. Oh yeah. Like how much are Pantone colours? They're a lot. Well, well it's not Pantone colours themselves that are expensive. It's the supplies the supplies so the, yeah so like the the color wheels like um oh god you know those little color books that you get there they're like um they're like fan folded ones mm. um the a single one of those can be 300 quid oh wow 300 just pounds for, just for one of those color reference and that's just for one of the types of like uncoded and coded are two different books sure that's quite a lot yeah yeah there we go. So we're looking good with that block colouring. I keep referring it to as that. I don't know if that's correct or not. Um, so we'll pop the grey away. Base coat. Base coat. <laughs> well, I've done the undercoat. This is the base. The undercoat was the kind of the black spray. This is the base coating um, that I'm doing in, in blocks. Hence, I call it block colouring. Um, you, you're the artist. You tell me. I don't work in 3D. <laughs> 2D only. Digital. Yeah. So digital. next, we're going to take on the kind of the lower half of the robes. Now, uh, we're going to go with the. I think we're going to do the whole thing in that lovely kind of uh, deep blue uh, that Prudence has got there. I think that'll work quite well. If you see me looking off to the side, it's because that's kind of where the screen is, so I can uh, monitor the live stream itself. And keep an eye on the chat in case anyone feels like talking. Uh, so, we were going to do, I think, Demonette Hide for the base, which is kind of a purpley lilac kind of colour. And then over the top of that, I'm going to do a McCrag Blue, or McCragger Blue, depending on how you want to say it. Um, McCracken Blue! So again, shake up the colours, get them nice and done like that. So. Now I'm going to make sure I have a lot on my little uh, palette pad here for this, because this is probably going to be the single most used colour um, or section that's going to be coloured is um, the robes. So we'll get a little bit of water. Make sure it's not too thick. That's looking pretty good. So get some of the colour off on the pad. Right. Wish me luck, everyone. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> what I'm here for. That's yes, that's working well. There we go. We've got just the right kind of consistency on the paint here. Just realised I've left the uh, headphones 
switched on on the PC. So it means every now and again I just hear myself talking. Oh. <laughs> Which is like, I, I thought I'd left a video playing in the background, but it's actually, it, it's just me. Um, the audio from the microphone being picked up and playing through. There we go. Yeah. That's looking good. Good stuff, good stuff. I can hear it from over there now as well. <laughs> okay, so this is why I've got to be careful because we're going behind the tail, which I've already painted, um, or at least on the base coat of. So I don't want any of the purple that we're using here, this demonette hide colour, to kind of come off onto there if I can avoid it. But we want to make sure we do get the colour onto the robe as it appears underneath. Here we go. Now, if there are any experienced painters out there who are going to watch this, um, either while we're streaming or when it goes up later on and as a rebroadcast, um, by all means scream at me in the comments and tell me where my technique can be improved. Uh, improved because that's the only way I'm going to learn <coughs> and I will bow to your superior knowledge I have a question you have a question by all means go ahead um have you realized that the citadel paints mm -hmm. like, the names of them yes are all very much warhammer 40k but the old paints that you had were very warhammer fantasy is that true so I've got Demonette Hyde, yeah. yeah, and there are Demonettes in Fantasy. Okay. Because um, they're the Demonettes of Slanesh, and oh, they, okay. um, like... It seems like more of the names are 40k than Fantasy, whereas the Fantasy, uh, the ones that you had before, were all Fantasy ones. Well, certainly Macragger Blue, yes. Um, but that used to be Ultramarines Blue. Um, but yeah, I, I see what you mean. A lot of the colours I have have got 40k references. Yeah. Rather than uh, Age of Sigmar or Fantasy. Yeah, because like one of the old ones that we need to replace at some point is Goblin Green. Goblin Green. No, it doesn't actually. What's the closest colour for that? Um, I did find the closest, but it's not quite right. So let me see what one that was I found. Like there's no real colour like that one. Or that blue, that ice blue. Mm. There's not really a good equivalent anymore. Um, Moot Green was the closest I found. Moot Green. Yeah. And then the blue, the closest I found was Lothar blue. Lothar blue. Okay, I'll have to keep those in mind for if I need them for future. Well, I've got them on the... They're on the list. They're on the list. on the list. That's good. So I'm just going to go over this base coat in places to make sure that uh, the black underneath is suitably covered. Again, there's going to be another layer on top, which is a different colour, um, the blue. This is just to block out the black from showing through too much. You get that little purple undertone. Yes, because I think the blue I'm going to end up watering down a little bit more. But we'll see. Just realised some, some of the painting I'm doing is not even on the camera because I'm kind of pulling it up into my... A bit closer to me rather than getting down to it. There we go. Okay. So, do you really need out? Are you just pestering me now, dog? I think you're lying. That's looking quite good. There's a little bit more to do just here. Just a touch there. Touch here. Okay, that's looking quite nice. Good. Good start. Get that brush cleaned off. There we go. So, 
that's kind of the bulk of the block colouring done. Um, the undercoating. Um, base coating. Base coating. Good <laughs> lord, I'm interchanging these terms just you back and forth. I just I, I need like the painter's vocab guide just next to me. So I know. What, what like, stage am I at? Like moves from what stage <laughs> are Next stage. Next stage. Okay, so I or am. Shade actually would be next, wouldn't it? And then layering? No, probably layer and then shade. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm going to have to check the app which order this. Is. Yeah. Uh, so I think I'm going to use then that. They suggest shade first and then layer. Shade first then layer. Yeah. Wow. That's what we'll do then. Well, no, that's just what they. This is the, the, the Citadel paint app. Yeah. By the way. That's what they suggest to do, is it? Okay. Bit of water on here as well. Mix it up rather nicely. There we go. So now we're going to attempt the belt as well as the book. This is where I get scared because this involves. You have a high detail brush. I do. Yes. I'm using this one for now, though. Okay. Well, I'm not surprised. She's a rather judgy dog. It's looking good. think about there on that. Good stuff. Okay, that's the belt done. Now then, how's her hair looking? Pretty good, actually. Fabulous. Fabulous! Don't need to do anything else with the hair for now. Okay. Now, uh, I think next was going to be what was I going to do next? Okay, I could probably do the horns. Yes, I think that's a good plan. Uh, where's the colours I was using for the horns again? I think I was going to use, so it was going to be the Dawnstone. I think there was a warmer grey, wasn't there? Because that kind of goes more with it. Yeah, I think there was. It was a Dawnstone. It must have been Dawnstone. No, no, it wasn't. Hold on, hold on. I don't, it was one. Hold on. Are we trying to remember? Yeah, I'm going to look at our inventory. Another so then I've got the... handy function of... <laughs> <laughs> Another handy function of the Citadel painting app. Yeah. Hi, Pug! Thanks for joining the stream. Warp Fiend Grey? Warp Fiend Grey. It's got like a slightly purple tone to it. You are correct. We did discuss using the Warp Fiend Grey, I think. I thought I had this all prepped. I have all my colours in my me. painting tray. Um, and I do have, obviously, my lovely wife to help me out with the uh, colouring. Uh, is it not on the table? Because it's not here. The Warp Fiend Grey? Yeah. Uh, Demon at Hyde, McCragger Blue, Ice Lead Belcher, Ironbreaker, Terminator Stone. It's not one of those, is it? No, it those are the dead. Those are the dead ones. Those are the dead ones. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Please stand by. <laughs> da -da -da -da. <laughs> I mean, I've got Eshin Grey here. Oh, there uh, it is. Oh, you found it. Yeah, it I, I, right. it I thought purple. I'd. It looks really purple, yeah, it's maybe a little bit. It was the Eshin grey because yeah. I think the Eshin grey was a slightly darker, and then I was going this to. This was the one I used for my dark elves with the demon at hide. I think um, you're right. When I made it, so this is the skin I used for my dark. Yeah, see, that's like lavender. Yes, this this will be the better better yeah. color to use. I think. 
podcast. There we go. So, uh, back to that brush again. So we'll get a bit of eshin, eshin grey on the go here. Oh, that's a nice dark, dark colour. Suitable for horns, I think. Nah, that's fine. Tiny bit of water as well. Make sure we water down the paint so we get a good coverage. There we go. So how are you doing today, Pug? Um, I'm kind of a bit delayed checking the chat every now and again because uh, I'm so focused on the painting. So you'll have to bear with me if you talk, if you uh, kind of message into the chat at all. Let's see. Got to be careful here not to get the hair or the ears, actually, for that point, for that matter. Yeah, this is turning out quite nicely. Nice bit of colour there. There you go, so that's one horn kind of done. Um, I'm getting into a really bad habit, I'm checking the stream every now and again, where I'm kind of pulling the model up to almost my chin and painting in, so it means it's not in the uh, kind of on camera, so uh, forgive me for that. Like I said, this is the first time I've done this in a stream format, um, so... Uh, that's already dried out. Oh dear, I didn't use quite enough water to keep that from drying out. So here we go, a bit more paint, a little bit of water. There we go. Here we go. Painting nicely now. There we go. Getting a good amount of the uh, colour off the brush onto the horns while avoiding getting any onto the hair. That's kind of key at this point is avoiding hair contamination. By the way, do you remember Ooh, I mentioned to you that there close. was like um daughters that you could use in nail art? Oh yes. Yeah. Ah. So if you needed to use that for anything. Eyes. Yeah, there you go, eyes. Uh -huh. Or if you want, these, if you wanted to get, um, these have bigger... Oh! Ooh, Yuri! <laughs> Dog just jumped at the desk, so... Uh, I'm gonna lock the back wheel That's as well. probably a good idea. <laughs> Thought that was you for a minute. How bumping into the you. desk. There we go. I know I got hips for days, but jeez. Yuri, um, you need to get down, that's causing right, issues. so these ones might be better because they're small mm -hmm. dots mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about... So you can use like those. Sure. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Right, so that's looking pretty solid, I think. Uh, let me move that to the side. There we go. So kind of doing this as we go. Obviously, that's how it works. Um, yep, yeah, that's looking pretty good, I think. So, uh, what I'm going to do next, starting from the top, we're going to do the uh, slight change in the flesh tone. So it's almost a ready orange. Now the red that's on there now I think is a little bit too deep and that has come off almost completely. There we go, that's better. That's fitted quite loosely there, Bugman. So we're gonna... Go mm -hmm. It's fine, it's not an issue. So we'll add a good amount of paint 
here. There we go. Now I'm thinking if I add just a tiny amount of the red to that as well, we can mix it in quite nicely. Because we just want a little hint of the red for the uh, just that little bit of demon tiefling ancestry. There we go, that's looking good. I will add a bit of water. Right, see how this goes. So we're going to start on the tail again. Here we go. Now that's ooh, fairly close, I think. I might darken it down just a little bit afterwards. Make sure we get that in there. Okay. Next is the face. So again, careful here not to miss. Probably just a tiny bit too light. It's not far off, I don't think. Make sure we get the hands done. Like so. Tiny bit more on the brush. Okay. Now this is quite, this is turning out all right actually because this is the key because I've watered down the color. Um, it initially looked quite bright, but as it's drying, there's a little bit more of that red. Um, well, if, if it'll focus, <laughs> this is the problem is the camera insists on focusing on the actual paint pots rather than the model itself. Um, but we're not too far off actually with that skin tone. That's turned out fairly well. That's good. So that's that layer done. And now we'll move on to the armor. Now this is where I want to add a little bit of silver. Um, I'm trying to decide whether I should do the whole thing in silver or if there's just sections that need to be done in the silver. I'm thinking it's just sections actually. Now what I might do here is uh, I will get the lead belcher base. Here we go. Now I don't think I'm going to water down the silver paint because it's already quite watery because I think the way they get the uh, metallic colouring is they kind of do a bit of, well they add some, what's the word I'm looking for, metal? Well, you're the expert when it comes to art in three dimensions. Digitally. Okay, so we're going to switch over to a detail brush. 
There we go. Uh, just because I want to make sure I don't accidentally miss. Here we go. That's looking all right. There we go. I could, if I really wanted to, actually put the model down in between moving it, but uh, I don't. So nice bit of silvering here. There we go. Same on the other side. Need to make sure they match. Okay, so that's there. And then we'll do just a touch on the back, I think. No, I don't think we need to. So what we'll do is this bit. There we go. Bit there. Little bit there. Yes, that's quite good. Quite happy with that. Okay. Didn't need as much silver as I thought, but let's make sure. Just want to make sure I haven't missed any important sections with the silver. There we go. That's looking all right, I think. Get the detail brush. Bit of a quick clean. There we are. Okay. Now comes the fun part. We're going to do the blue on the uh, bottom section of the outfit. So we can put the silver away for the moment. And we're switching over to our good friend, McCragger Blue. <coughs> McCracken Blue! Okay. There we are. So. Give that a good shake. So here we are. Born to be free. Princes of the Universe. Is that the lyrics? Yeah. Cool. I got it right! I would sing it, but... <laughs> but I'm live streaming and I'll get a copyright claim because that's how YouTube anyway. works. That's just how it is now. There's nothing in this to claim! There's dragons. Those are violent. <laughs> There's also a dungeon somewhere in the ether. Okay, here we go. You know what they do in dungeons. Paint.
keep this going. There we go. <coughs> Bit more blue. Oh, can I need more? There we go. Getting there. Just got to make sure I keep a good amount on the brush, but not too much. Which I might actually have at the moment. Oh no, we're good. We're good. Here we go. Nice touch of the blue there I think now the trim the uh, kind of edge of the uh, kind of cloak here is going to be a fun part in a little bit I will have to use a much finer detail brush for that I think Have a look in. Yeah. A little bit more. Just on these front lovely sections here. I've actually thought... Nah, we're good. Nearly there. Here we go. Nice. Pretty even coating there. Just need to tidy up a couple of spots. There we go. Lovely. Lovely. Now what I need to keep in mind is I'll need to do the trim, which will be a lighter blue. So let's see if uh, again, it's not focusing, but you kind of, you can kind of get an idea for the colour. Now, it does appear brighter um, on camera than it actually is when you're looking at it. It's a little bit darker. It's actually much, much closer to um, the colour of Prudence's actual uh, kind of... What would you call that? Cloak? Dress? Clothing? The, bl the bottom blue section. Robe. Robe. That's the word I was looking for, not cloak. Not like this. Uh, again, it's not it's not no, focusing not on it. That's the, and and next time I do this, I'll figure something out for um, actually getting the focus to work properly. Just want to make sure we tidy up a couple of the sections where the blue hasn't quite taken effect. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I think we're looking good there. Very nice. Excellent. So that's that layer completed. Clean off the brush. And I've just realised what I have missed. No, that's dried. Uh, I need to put a little bit of the silver onto Prudence's shoes, or her boots, not shoes. Doing her a disservice by just calling them shoes. They're not. Here we go. Right, let's take a quick go. There we are, nice. Yeah, that just adds a little bit of uh, additional colour to how dark the bottom is. This uh, silver 
does help to kind of catch the eye and draw attention to his stance a little bit. But I do want to make sure I don't put any silver on the robes. There we go. Nice. That'll do nicely. Okay. So what's next? What are we looking at here? Uh, so... I would think... kind of want to have a look at doing the gauntlets a little bit. So the gauntlets have got a couple of straps on the back, which are this brown. Now, they're not that dark, so uh, I will do the Gawthor brown on them. Here we go. Uh, what I will do, which is my finest detail, that's zero. So I need this one, which is the zero zero, which has got the nicer kind of, uh, where are we, here, there we go. So you can see it's got the nicer grip here, so I've got a little bit better control. Um, so we will take a little bit of that brown, just a touch of the brown. Put it onto our palette over here. Okay. Now, let's see. Ooh, this is where I get nervous because I can't quite see it too well. We need more brown. This is tough. This is very tough to do. That's one. I'll have to do a little bit of cleaning on that in a bit. And then the next one. It's there. <laughs> off just a touch. Now this is a fun bit. Let me 
make sure we don't have too much on the brush. There we go, that's looking a little bit on the better side, I think. Yeah, we're getting there. So we're done with the detail brush for the moment. So next up, we go back to this one. And we're going to use some of the brown to do that leather on the book and the belt. So we can water this down a little bit so we get the better coverage, a bit more of a natural uh, colouring going on as well. There we go. So I'm going to leave the cover of the book this deeper, darker brown. So that it contrasts with the lighter colour of the uh, kind of clasp holding it together. And it also means that it will uh, show up a bit clear, more clearly against the belt. I actually should be using the detail brush for that bit because that's gotten quite narrow. So I won't use the kind of wide handled detail brush. I will use the little diddy one. Little little diddy one. So make sure we get a bit of paint, make sure we're not gonna lose our colour on the palette. Okay, so That's tried quite quickly. Just make sure I have a bit more, touch more water. going to the side here. Now this is where it can be tricky because these 3D printed models are, are, uh, arrive in a single piece. So you can't paint anything before they're put together. Whereas sometimes with uh, the multi-part plastic miniatures if you think there's going to be a piece that's really fiddly, you can kind of magnetise the limbs so that you can remove them and paint underneath where there might be some really fiddly sections. I think we're about there with that. That looks good. Okay. So now... I'm feeling brave. We're going to do the lighter blue trim of the cloak. Now, 
I think that'll be this ice blue colour. But I want to make it a little bit darker. So what I'll do is we'll get some of the ice blue. Good amount of the ice blue. I want to make sure I have plenty to do this. Like so. And then I'll mix in just a little bit of the Macraga blue. And that'll give us a slightly darker shade, but one that is lighter than the main blue of the robes. So we will take just one part of the Macraga, mix that in. There we go, that's looking rather good. And a touch of water. Okay, let's give this a shot. Steady hands, don't fail me now. They're failing me. <laughs> yeah, we're okay, we're okay. nerve-wracking stuff. I don't want to make a mistake. So if we turn that a little bit, go this way. Now, what could work here? There we are. Now, the good news is I should hopefully be able to clean this up a little bit as well. If there's any bits where I've kind of managed to go over or get onto a point I didn't want, uh, I'll be able to fix that. And the dog is asleep. She's clearly bored out of her mind. Now. watching me paint. Uh, we're getting a couple of little mistakes here but I can fix that. This is what I find happens for me is when I'm painting for a long period of time I start to lose focus not just on the task I'm completing but like with my eyes because I'm looking at something so small and intricate for such a long time period of time. A magnifying thing might be quite useful. Yes. Or like, no, do you know what? Um, what was the bloody character's name in Toy Story 2 came out to repaint Woody? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like where he has them on his glass and just flicks them down and he just goes, <laughs> um, that, that would be more useful for me, I think. I am getting paint onto my painting handle. Here we go. Okay. Bit here as well. There we go. A little bit there. A little bit here.
tiny bit more water. Make sure the paint colour doesn't dry out. There we go. Okay, we'll do the edge here. Like so. Okay, we're getting there. Uh, don't ask me to paint the really intricate pattern that's actually on the uh, bulk of the robes because I will have no hope of doing that. I cannot replicate that. That's just that's just too good. It's too good. I can't do it. Yeah, that's looking quite good actually. I like that. That's okay. Perhaps a touch brighter, but I think on a model that's not too bad. Okay, so what I will do is get a little bit of the McCragger blue, we'll just do a little bit of repairs to the bits that need them. Because there's one or two just little sections just need a little bit of covering. Yeah, that's good. Tiny bit there. Ah, we need a little bit more of the blue. Add it to the watered down section. Here we go. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's looking all right, I think. Any other bits that need repair work on the old paint? Yep, there's a tiny bit right there. Right there, gotcha. Tiny bit here. A little bit there. And no, that's good. Nice, 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 nice. I like that. That's okay. Uh, just thinking, I could apply a little bit of a wash over the top. To make sure the blue is dark enough. Make it just a little bit more muted. It's just slightly too bright. So this kind of wash that I'm creating is just a very, very watered down McCragga blue because um, it just adds a little bit of the darkness we want to that highlighting. Like so. I can always layer up the wash if I need it a bit darker. That's not far off. That's not far off. Maybe just a tiny bit more, but we'll wait until we've done a little bit more of the model um, before I decide whether I need to make that just a little bit darker. Hello, the lucky queen. How are you? Thank you for joining the stream. Yes, this is kind of what painting a figure looks like, or at least the way that I do it. It's not necessarily the right way of doing it, but this is how I go about it. I imagine there's only so many ways that you can do it. Jackson Pollock. Just Jackson Pollock. <laughs> just... <laughs> I don't want to do that because that'll ruin it. That'll just drown the detail of this little figurine. Okay. That answer was too practical. Well, of course it is. I'm a practical person. 
I solve practical problems. Don't you laugh at me. Let's have a quick look, see how we're doing. Hey, good stuff. Two people watching, and I think one of them is me. <laughs> so there's three people watching. Oh, well, it should. I, I count me. I count me. Right, so we'll get a little bit of the brown. That's a little bit too much of the water, so... Dry the brush off. Okay, here we go. I want I'm doing all right, thank you. I want at some point for you to do a figure painting, but in like the style of Bob Ross or that guy off um, Family Guy. You're just really calm. Now we're gonna paint this. Thing. Now we're gonna paint this thing. <laughs> just gonna put in a happy little tree over here. A happy little tree. Isn't that so nice? <laughs> <laughs> the joy of painting D&D &D figures. Oh, buddy, watch out. That beholder's gonna get you. Okay. Oh, no, I've gone over, but I can fix that. I can fix that. That's not an issue. Uh, we, 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 we need, I should have used a wash for this, but we're fine. Uh, <laughs> Got a little bit of something caught in your hair there, Prudence. Oh no, it's fixed. Ugh. Tell you what, getting a lot of practice in today. <laughs> Go there. There are only happy little accidents. <laughs> 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 nice. Yeah, that's looking pretty sweet. And what I might do with that is just like a watered down grey over the top of that brown to give it the darker kind of shade for the um, uh, for the back here. So that's looking quite nice. Now, is there any more repair work to do? I think not. Um, I think we're about there. So... That's looking quite good. Uh, there's a bit of work around the face might need doing, actually. Uh, so we do need a little bit of the Rhinox hide again. Just to fix that tiny bit of Prudence's hair. There. There's a tiny bit there. Perfect! Oh, nope, tiny bit here, tiny bit there. Did I get any? Nope, we're good. There is a tiny bit of the model that I didn't manage to clean, actually, but we'll do that. That's good. Okay. So. what was left to do so there's a little bit of detailing on the horns we can do um, we've got to do the eyes as well now the eyes are going to be tricky i think we're nearly at a point where I could call this approaching complete. Ah, I know what I've missed. There's a little bit I missed. So I will go for the fine detail brush. Get a tiny bit of that blue. And fix that. If 
find sometimes painting can be quite therapeutic. Um, you just get so focused on what you're doing. You forget all else. All your troubles drift away. Well, I'm really going Bob Ross now, aren't I? Let's make sure I'll pop that bubble. There we go. That's looking nice and shiny. Well, the silver parts are anyway, which they should. Here we go. Okay. That's nice. Cap back on the brush. So we've got a little bit of work to do on the skin. There's a little bit of work on the top there. But I think we're approaching a point. Like I said, the majority of that is done. Bob Ross's spirit is with us all even now. Very true. Very true. I think uh, we all channel a little bit of Bob Ross now and then. So we will use the... Uh, no, we will use the Eshin Grey. So, a little bit of Eshin. Nice touch on the palette. Bit of water. Here we go. So, move that out of the way. I want this to be darker than the layer beneath. section there okay what else needs a tiny bit of fixing We're going to need a little bit of the... Well, no, actually. I won't use that. I will use... A little bit of a wash, I think. Have any games been sucking away at your life or not? Um... I've kind of gotten quite addicted to They Are Billions. Uh, that's taken quite a lot of my time. Um, it's like a defence strategy game where you're building a, um, a colony to defend yourself against uh, hordes of infected. That's quite fun, and that's been taking a lot of my time. Um, what else has there been? We'll use the Druchi Violet, I think. Um... There's also been um, Shadow of the Colossus came out this week, which I've been playing. 
a little bit of as well. Um, so that's been quite fun. And Monster Hunter World I've spent a lot of time with. Um, so those are really the main ones that have been taking up a lot of my time. So in answer to your question, yeah, there are a couple that have... Uh, couple of games that have been eating into my free time. Ooh. Right. So I'll get a little bit of the Caraborg Crimson. We'll do... Uh, yeah, we'll do a little bit of this. Uh, we'll apply it to the tail first. So this should add just like a little bit of extra kind of depth to the colour. Uh, what it should also do is kind of sit or settle more readily into kind of the recessed bits um, of the model so it'll provide a little bit of natural looking shading well such is my theory anyway i could be completely wrong yeah i've, I've been quite enjoying monster hunter world um it's Probably it's the first Monster Hunter game I've really gotten into. I did try um, Monster Hunter Try on the Wii U, I think it was. Yeah, it was the Wii U, I think I got it. Because um, it was on the Wii and then they re-released it for the Wii U. Um, and I just couldn't get into it. It just didn't feel fun. Um, especially because a lot of the time the monsters could uh, run between these different areas which all had loading screens so it just felt like the game took ages uh, but with monster hunter world i like that the um kind of the main areas are just like a really big explorable area so there's no loading screens once you're into a hunting area there's no additional uh, loading screens to chase monsters between so you don't have this uh, kind of major pause to the action uh, let's see okay yeah I think we've got the skin color just about correct now with that uh, final wash on there so that's gone quite well uh, so with the horns we did the gray the ashen gray uh, I think next was going to be just a little bit of a, yeah, a little bit of a brown kind of wash to it. Just so it stands out a little bit from the, uh, from the hair. Maybe a little bit more. There we are. So.
tiny bit more to add here. There we go. There we go. A bit better. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, we're almost there, I think, with the base model. Um, and then I'm going to try, we'll see how this goes, try and add some of the um, details to the spell uh, effects in Prudence's hands. Yeah, it was definitely quite a slow game, um, Monster Hunter uh, try on the Wii U. It was, I mean, I know a lot of people liked it, but it just didn't quite fit uh, f for me. It didn't feel quite like the experience I wanted it to be, unfortunately. Okay, I think we're looking quite good there. So, what we're going to do, we're going to take the detail brush, we're going to take a bit of this, nope, wrong one, Macragga Blue again, we're going to apply it to the jewel, yeah. Quite carefully. There's one. There's a second one on the other side to do as well. There's two. So those jewels are done. Well, the... the uh, base coat on them is. Rinse off the brush. There we go. That's the wrong side. Needs to go over there. Okay. So now... Uh, let's see. So we are getting there. Oh boy. So what we could do is add just a little bit of highlighting by trying to dry brush uh, the horns. So I think we can use... Sylvaneth Bark. Now these dry paints are, I don't know if you can see, very kind of thick paints like they don't, they don't pour out. They're like a very thick pigment because they're intended to just, um, well, dry brush. Um, so you get a little bit on your brush, like so. You want to make sure only a little bit is coming off when you rub or brush anything. Now, here's where we get tricky. We'll do the edge of this book. Actually need a tiny bit more. Just took a little bit too much off. There we go. That should be about right. We'll do the edge of the book, other edge, there we go, that's good, a little bit on the belt as, as well, and then May have lost a bit too much of the pigment again. So a 
I'll do this. Okay. Uh, there may be still too much on the brush. There we go. Because what I don't want to do is end up with too much. Going on here. There we go. Now I'm going to do the same with the hair. Now the reason for that is it then gives it a much more natural look, as if the uh, the light is kind of on it then so you can see the lighting and shading a bit better whoops hit my camera tiny bit more there there we go no, that might be a wee bit too much. looking good. Clean off the dry brush a little bit. Yeah, I. it's taken me quite a bit of practice to get to a point where I feel like my models look okay when I finish painting them. Um, they're not up to a professional standard by any means. Um, I'm still very much a, a novice when it comes to miniature painting. I just quite enjoy doing it um so i thought i'd finally get a live stream done where i'm trying it but it certainly takes a lot of patience um there's just so much to kind of do um so many different um kind of parts to a model to paint and how the color scheme is going to work and you know, it's it's a, there's a lot to kind of think about as you're quite a lot of doing them. Types of paint that, do different things. that is certainly true. There's a lot of different types. So you've got your normal kind of acrylic paints, as I'm using, I think. Um, water-based acrylic, I think. So. Water-based acrylic. You do have your washes as well. Um, I mean, I would say if anybody's interested in seeing how they work, to look at. Um, Games Workshop has on iOS and Android, I think, a Citadel paint app. And it's got a breakdown of all the paint colors and everything, but it also has example videos on how to use each different type of paint. This is and true. I watched those the other day, and they were actually pretty informative. Yeah, they're very useful, mm -hmm. um, those paint guides. Quality, like they were all very crisp, so you could see exactly what he was doing. And... Yeah, definitely worth... A look if you are interested in uh, painting miniatures at all. Look, I didn't know about that blood technical paint until I saw that video. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot to learn when it comes to these types of models and uh, paints. Got a little bit of fixing to do on that, but that's not turned out too bad. So that was the Ushabti bone for the parchment in the uh, spell book that Prudence is carrying on her hip. Let's see, that's looking quite good. I just need a little bit of the Rhinox to go over where I just slightly went over with that paint just now. Like so. 
I'm actually thinking that's the spine of the book, so I don't know why I painted that bit. So, um, if I fix that like so, that kind of makes it look like a weathered spine, as if it's been opened quite a bit. So I think that works nicely. I think the, the other thing I would say for people who are interested in looking at it is while Citadel has like good paint schemes and everything for their Warhammer models. Don't feel pressured to having to buy all Citadel art supplies because they'll sell you a paintbrush, which is good for, you know, modeling, but there are other brands of paintbrush. That's <laughs> correct. Not the only ones. They might try to sell you, for instance, we, we have it as well, the watering, water pot. Yeah. If you've got a spare mug lying around your house, you don't need to buy the Citadel pot. Yeah. Just make sure you don't accidentally Drink it. Drink it. But yeah, so don't. So, like, for instance, the paintbrushes that he's using, some of the ones, the orange and the green ones, those aren't Citadel brand. Those are um, just a random brand I got from the hobby shop that are made for model painting, but they're not specifically made for Warhammer models. They were more, uh, I think, for, you know, like cars and planes, that kind of modeling. But it's still the same thing. Um, again, the palette pad, any, any palette will do. You don't have to buy Warhammers. No, like, Citadel is by no means the only uh, oh, yeah. brand of yeah. model painting out there. It might not even be the best one. Um, it's no. just the one that I'm familiar with and how to use. Well, you're in the store, there it is. But it's also, you're paying for quality and for the brand. Yeah, not I mean, I... Because the they're, not, they're not cheap quality, but they're also not cheapest <laughs> in terms of actual price. I'm, I quite like the Citadel paints, but they're the ones the that paint, I, yeah. they're certainly the ones that I grew up with, because uh, I started playing Warhammer 15 years ago, um, kind of fell in and out of love with it, but these are the paints I've always used are the Citadel ones, so they're the ones I'm familiar with. There we go, that's looking alright. Nice bit of brown wash on there. That's good. Oof. What was the, oh, the other thing as well, in terms of brushes, two of the brushes that I gave to him, those ones on the side, they're actually from a um, nail art kit. So they're just cheapo. Oh, nail, these two. Yeah. But those are um, daughters, technically. So they're like little metal ends, which I thought would be easier to do the eyes and stuff. That's but a good point. They're all small... You know, um, they're all small brushes, so and you can use anything as real as long as it's small enough, really. This is true. But yeah, like those nail br oh, uh, nail nail art brushes set cost me for the whole set like five quid, but there's like ten brushes in it, <laughs> and then a bunch of different daughters. Yeah, so you can use uh, other supplies and equipment anything that makes the job a little bit easier i just realized i was pulling off to the side again i've got i'm getting into a very bad habit of not showing what i'm doing on the camera because i'm just moving all over the darn place here we go okay Now it's that, it's the face. So Prudence's lips are actually quite a dark um, color. Now this is where, oh dear, what are we thinking? I wouldn't say you need to do her lips. That's, that's no. getting real specific. Yeah, it is. Like, uh, I wouldn't have even thought to do that. <laughs> so. I mean, if you wanted to use the daughter to do, like, a tiny dot of a darker brown, but I wouldn't say you have to go crazy. Hmm. Especially considering that that's regular scale, and so their head is very small. Yes, this As is true. As opposed to hero scale, where it would have been a tiny bit bigger. Zero, zero. That's zero. That's zero, zero. Which is the smallest brush that I have. So, can I... Uh, 
Yep, there's the eyebrows in. Now the eyes are going to be tricky. Okay. Mm, let me think. Tiny little dot of black. No, that's not going to work. I'll leave that alone. That's fine. That's fine. Some of this is experimentation as well. Um, so. Okay. Let me see. Tiny bit. Your PC is having a fun time. Mm. It's not been out in a while. This is true. That's that bit done. Right. So I think we're looking pretty good there. What I will do is add just a little bit of the, uh, not that one, this one, lead belcher onto the gauntlets. So, same here. Like so. So I think my next step now is to do the uh, the flames coming out of Prudence's hands. So I think for that we were going to do... where are we? There we are. So Screamer Pink for the base. So because this is an Eldritch Blast, um, I kind of want this to have like a really deep purple-red... I just broke the cardinal rule. I didn't water down my paint. There we go. Maybe a bit too much watering down. Getting this mixture right, I have, I always have trouble with. So we'll get this nice and covered. Now this will look interesting, I think. A little bit more colour in there. OK. 
Give it a good old and uh, base coat. There we go. A little bit more, so we can do the other side as well. Maybe too watery. Nah, that's all right actually. Because I can always add an extra layer or two if I need it. I think. There we are. Okay. Looking good there, I think. That's good. Okay. Now this is where things will get interesting. So we want fine detail. I'll take a little bit of white scar. <coughs> wow, that one hasn't been opened before. Yeah, that's one of the new ones. That's one of the new ones. A little bit of white and oh, dab on the eye. Well, don't dab on the eye, but you know what I mean. Yeah, that's quite good. There we go. We are getting there with the eyes. Um, everything's coming along pretty good, I think. So we do have just a tiny bit of fixing to do on the back as well. I thought I'd drop the brush for a second, but it was in, in my other hand. Uh, so this was the Dawnstone. Here we go. So a little bit. Touch of water. And fix, 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 fix. There we are. Switch to the detail brush. 
because we do have just a little bit. Whoops. Tiny bit to do here. Touch more to mix with the water. There we go. Okay, so. Just the straps on the side of the armor to try and do. Which is not easy. There we go. That's the straps done there. Okay. Call that bit done. Right. Oh, there we go. I've been leaning over a bit too much on this model. Okay. This might do the job. So, get a touch of Dawn, uh, Dawn Yellow. Uh, Rogal Dawn was one of the Primarchs of the Imperial... It was the Primarch of the Imperial Fists, I believe. Okay, so we want to make sure only the very tip actually has any paint on it. So we go... Here we go. No, it's going to be too big. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a good thought, but it's about the same size as the entirety of the eye. Ah, okay. um, good lord, that is tiny. Wow. Uh, we will go with not brush zero, brush zero zero. My word. Just the tiniest, tiniest amount on the end of the brush. The problem is the yellow does not show up very well on the white. That'll do. That's okay. Actually, I can now go back to doing the jewel that I wanted to do on the gauntlet so this is literally going to be a dab i love that word of bright ice blue there and then again on the one on the other side it goes there Always lick your paintbrushes. No. Never lick your paintbrushes? Yeah. Then who told me to lick them? I don't know who told you to do that. I wasn't there for your trouble, Charlie. <laughs> I, I blame Banksy. It was probably his fault. He's aerosol. 
<laughs> yeah. That's why you should never lick your brush. Yeah, I think we're quite good on this one. We just need uh so we did the base was the scream of pink we'll do uh the flames i'm gonna do just a tiny bit of the corn red on the high on the raised areas and then a dry brush and a shade or a shade and a dry brush There we are, right. that so what we're we thinking caribou crimson on the flames depends if you want a purple tone at all to it or not uh, yeah, probably should. Well, which would be the Druchi Violet. Yeah, a light shade of that, and then you can decide if you need, if you want it to be a bit more red, you can then do the... Uh, That's probably a good idea. The, the caribou one. The, the caribou. The caribou. The caribou one. <laughs> caribou. Oh, I know, Yuri. The dog wants to go out the back door, which is directly behind me. Uh, I can do it now. There is another door. It's in the kitchen, but does she know it exists? Find out. <gasps> Surprise adventure for the puppy! Well, I hope she has fun. Thanks very much for joining, um, Lucky Queen. Um, thanks for watching for as long as you did. But um, yeah, have fun with your hunt and I'll see you later. Oh dear. We're getting closer and closer, I think. Tiny bit of fixing needs doing on the back still. Cleaned that bit. Okay, so next up is going to be just a quick dry brush 
well, no, we're going to do another layer of the silver. And then we can dry brush um, the armour to give it a little bit of a highlight. And then we'll be nearly done. So we need brush one. Uh, we'll do iron breaker. That needs a bit more of a shake. There we go. Excellent. That's better. Are you still trying to get out the back door, dog? Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't believe me that the other door leads to the same. <laughs> it leads to exactly the same area. A little bit more just for the other side as well. She still doesn't believe that the other one leads out. Making sure get the armour looking good and correct. We want Prudence to look her best. It's probably a very bad habit to lick the uh, ends of the brushes. Right. I'm liking that. What then we want is just a touch of the white scar. Like so. So on the jewel, just very tippy top. Same on this one, very tippy top. Gives us a nice, almost a little glow uh, or shine um, on the jewel that's um, kind of attached to her braces. Okay. I really wish this camera would actually autofocus on the model rather than my paints at the back so I could kind of show the progress a bit better. But that's a learning point for the next time I decide to do a painting stream. Um, but, you know, where kind of, you can, yeah, it's not, it's not going to focus of, as well as I'd like. But you can see the colour. I think it's matched fairly closely to um, the Dusty Leaves kind of character art. Um, as I say, the camera makes it look a little bit brighter than it actually is. So the trim is a slightly darker uh, than it appears on the screen there. So otherwise, I think we're OK, though. Uh, so what I do want to do is just a little bit of the which color was i going to use the corn red did she enjoy her adventure the little puppy no oh you didn't go on your adventure well we went outside and she was hey. very confused shush no barkies no barking You're barking mad dog <laughs> uh, 
I know, little pup. There we go, that's looking better. Right. Just two seconds while I let this little smelly dog face out of that back door. Wait, where are you? Oh, you're behind me. You are actually directly behind me. Hi. Okay, bye. What, don't you want to go out? There you go. Go enjoy your adventure. And everyone can see. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, come here then. Come here. Oh, there's a dog on the stream. There's a dog on the stream. Yes. This is the one that can paint. Oh. Oh, you're a painting dog. No. Oh, wait, no. Ah. <laughs> okay. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Okay. Good girl. There you go. Uh, excuse you. Excuse you. This is my live stream, not yours. Get out of the way, please. Thank you. Oh, brief invasion by a dog on the stream. <laughs> Are you okay over there? No! I <laughs> um, there is one thing. Could you grab for me out of the paint set? Uh, blood letter glaze. You know what? It's a bright red. I know Yuri what agrees with me. Blood looks like. No, you don't. You've never witnessed it. Like this one? No, will you just give me the. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So on this one we will do a little bit of a glaze on the bit of a glaze on the flames here. That is too thick. Well done. And what was that? Someone else's food. <laughs> oh, I, could, I would have taken it. <laughs> I'm not that evil. <laughs> Your more neutral alignment. Don't mess with people's food. <laughs> <laughs> Joey doesn't share food. I'm a bit annoyed as well because it was the Indian, which I was going to suggest as having us today. Oh. And he's just so used to coming here. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I didn't realise it wasn't our house. <laughs> Order it and then he has to come back. No, that would just be a bit on the mean side, I think. I don't care, I want Indian. You want Indian. That's fine. Oh, you're eyes at me. Mm. Fine, you pick that up. Yeah, okay. So I think what we need to do now. Uh, is probably look at a little bit of the dry brush. Here we go.
right. I think we're just about there with prudence. We just need to dry brush a little bit of. Oh, thank you, Yuri. Adding a backing track, are you? Yes, great. Uh, there is one more dry brush colour I need, which is Necron Compound. Uh, please. Can you grab that? Did you? Yep. Where is it? One of the three colours that I grabbed. It'll be this one. Yes. The one right in front of you. <laughs> Bam. Uh, I can't see the wood for the trees or the paint for the pots. I, d I can't see is what I tried to say. <laughs> ah! yeah, let's make sure we get that. Yeah, there we go. Just a touch. Touch on the old dry brush there. Just here as well. Okay, and finally, um, this bit here. Has turned out rather nicely. Every time I look at it, I see something else that I want to fix. <laughs> That's the problem. Um, yeah, we gotta call it quits at some point. Oh, someday I will. Today is not that day. You want out now, do you, dog? Again. So, a little bit of repair work to do, and then I'm probably going to call it, because I think I have reached the point that my skill will let me get to. Mm -hmm. 
Right, I think we're just about there with Prudence. I'm not going to paint the base on stream. I'll do that separately uh, later on. But I think that's about where we're going to get to for now. Um, so there's Prudence, if she shows up on the camera. Let me try removing her from the paint handle. And see if... Are you going to focus? Sort of. Ooh. No, it's not going to focus, is it? Okay. Um, two seconds and I will be able to fix that. Let's get the controller uh, too far. Super macro. No, it's too dark if I do that. Uh, there we go. So there she is again. That blue highlight um, trim on the robes is a little bit brighter on the camera, but it makes the rest of it appear a bit darker. So I'll get some photos up as well. But that's Prudence pretty much complete, I think. Um, so yeah, not too bad. Quite happy with how she's turned out. There may be a little bit of um, fixes I'll do later on, but. I think for the purpose of the stream, that's turned out fairly well. Um, anyway, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who has joined uh, the stream to watch me paint um, for... How long have we been going? What time are we on? Seven. How Blimey. That's two and a half hours I've been painting this. Good grief. No wonder Yuri's a bit eager to get out. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you if I decide to do another painting stream, um, let me know if you want to see another one. But this was quite fun. I don't know how to end this. How should I end this? How do I bye end this? Bye! bye. You always go bye bye. Oh, I do go bye bye, yes. How should I end this by going bye bye? But yes, yeah, so um, yeah, thank you and bye bye. Uh, where's my output? There it is. Okay, I'm going to stop now. Bye!